Welcome everyone on this historic day for our MIT community. I'm Diane Green, Chair of the Cor MIT Corporation, and on behalf of the Corporation, it's my immense pleasure to join together with you to welcome MIT President-elect Dr. Sally Kornbluth. <laughs> Kornbluth. <laughs> And let me just add, and her husband, Danny, and her son, Alex. <laughs> Last February, President Reif announced his decision to step down at the end of this year. Dr. Reif has made remarkable contributions to MIT during his 42 years of service, first as a faculty member, then as provost, and for the past decade as our president. And we owe him our highest gratitude. Thank you, Raphael. Given MIT's world stature and the tremendous challenges of our times, we knew from the outset that the search for MIT's next president would need to break new ground. It was crucial to gain high quality input from the entire MIT community, as well as from the leaders of our peer universities. It was a tall order to coalesce this input into a set of attributes and then questions that would, over the course of our evaluation of CVs, posted talks, reports, interviews, and references, let us determine if an individual matched the profile that we had developed. In choosing the members of our search committee, we worked with the corporation's executive committee, corporation members who are recent MIT graduates, faculty chair, Lily Sai, and the head of human resources, Ramona Allen. We selected a 20-person committee composed of corporation members, faculty members from each school and the college, staff members, a graduate student and an undergraduate. The rigorous and sustained process that we went through gave us an understanding of elite higher education's needs in general and MIT's needs specifically. Equally importantly, we developed great trust and respect for one another, which allowed us to work constructively despite our diverse backgrounds and views. And you can imagine how wonderful it was to find that we all agreed on our four finalists, and then, after we'd exhaustively interviewed each, enthusiastically, an understatement, decide that Dr. Sally Cornbooth would be the ideal 18th president of MIT. Sally was our clear and obvious choice. Her selection came easily, and it was unanimous. And I'll just add that it was unanimous uh, at the corporation this morning when we took our vote as well. So why is that? Sally Kornbluth is an exceptional administrator. She's widely respected for her ability to create an environment that breaks barriers and enables every student, faculty, and staff member to contribute at their highest levels. She's known for her judgment, her plain spokenness and integrity. And we, by the way, checked innumerable references, back door and front door, <laughs> couldn't uncover any uh, blemishes. Um, <laughs> Dr. Kornbluth's leadership style is decisive, bold, and invariably informed by high moral principles. 
Her career has exemplified a powerful drive for excellence and a capacity to appreciate, respect, and integrate a wide array of viewpoints. Sally demonstrates the leadership qualities necessary to do justice to MID's incredible assemblage of talent, people who seek to achieve the seemingly impossible, who demand excellence, and who are driven by a hunger to make a positive difference in the world. Dr. Kornbluth arrives at the Institute with a deep understanding of MIT's strengths. Her vision, humanity, and warmth are evident to all who have had the good fortune to come into contact with her. So it's therefore with an tremendous pride on behalf of the entire MIT community that I now invite the Institute's new president-elect to join us. Thank you, Madam Chair, Diane, for the warm introduction. And thank you also for the careful and thorough way you led the search process and for the outstanding questions you and your colleagues posed. It's always a good sign when you leave an interview actually wanting the job, so that was good. <laughs> um, I was so impressed by John Jarvie and all of the Presidential Search Committee who inspired me to see the world of opportunities ahead for the Institute. And of course, I could not be more grateful to the executive committee and all of the members of the MIT Corporation for trusting me with the profound responsibility of leading MIT. To President and Mrs. Reif, Raphael and Chris, thank you so much for welcoming my family and me with such warmth and graciousness. And a big hello to the entire MIT community, to all of you here in this room and online, students, staff, postdocs, faculty, alumni, as well as our Cambridge neighbors. As anyone knows who has ever held a major leadership role, it would be impossible to do the job without great support from your family. In that case, it's my husband Danny, a superb scientist and always my greatest constructive critic and sounding board, and our two children, our daughter Joey, a medical student in California who I dearly hope I can lure to Boston, and our son Alex, who is right here at MIT because he's a fifth year PhD student in EECS. Uh, that's course six, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is, I'm here because of one other person who will never know it, the most transformative teacher of my life, the late Bill DeWitt. He was a biology professor at my undergraduate institution, Williams, and he taught a class that I only took because I had to take some science to graduate. I was majoring in political science, and I desperately needed to fulfill my science distribution requirement. I wound up in his class on human biology and social issues, and for me, it changed everything. As a poli-sci major, I should have been drawn to really the social issues side of the class, but suddenly, because of Bill's brilliant gifts as a teacher, I found myself fascinated by how cells function. I signed up for every biology class I could possibly cram in before I graduated, including an amazing course during winter study, which is very similar to IAP here at MIT. And I wound up getting a fellowship to study genetics at Cambridge. And this time when I say Cambridge, I mean the one in England, but <laughs> from now on I'll be talking about this one. Um, those two years in England introduced me to the subjects and the intellectual obsessions that would define my career. And not incidentally, they also introduced me to Danny. And they set me on the path that has brought me to the doorstep of MIT. So for all of you who are teachers, from graduate students to senior faculty, never underestimate your impact. It is amazing what can blossom when you sow the seeds of curiosity and inspiration. Though I grew up in the Northeast, living in North Carolina for nearly 30 years has given me a real appreciation for Southern hospitality. But I have to tell you, the warmth and welcome I've received from all of you here at MIT has been incredible. Of course, this is not my first time on the MIT campus, but each time I've gotten a glimpse of what makes MIT so remarkable. 
I've been here several times as an MIT parent, so I got to have a look at one slice of the intense world of MIT research, as well as a sense of the amazing creative energy of your graduate students and postdocs. Before that, I actually came once as part of a sort of visiting herd of provosts, and I'll never forget looking out the grand space, out the window at the grand space of Killian Court, seeing a huge uh, crowd of students making something that looked like go-karts or maybe catapults, I'm not really sure. <laughs> But I'm told I will come to know this delightful phenomenon as 2009, <laughs> uh, MIT education at its hands-on best. So here, as your president-elect, I see the most important thing of all, this remarkable creative community. I have really, really loved my life and my many roles at Duke. I had lots of reasons to stay there, really no reasons pushing me to leave which tells you the strength of the pull I felt drawing me to MIT. It was overwhelming to see how much people loved the place and how proud they were to be a part of it. I've always felt that my greatest professional strength and pleasure is enabling the success of other people. So who would, want, who would not want to do that for the best of the best here at MIT? I wanted to be part of a place that celebrates new advances in science and technology the same way other schools celebrate a basketball game. <laughs> so, 02139, world capital of intellectual fun. <laughs> a place that faces hard problems with honesty and facts and comes up with outstanding solutions from MIT's legendary women in science reports to the work you're doing now to develop shared principles on the vital importance of free expression. I wanted to join a community that is leading the way on educational outreach and access that has a long, proud tradition of selecting for potential, not pedigree. A community that brings together people from an incredible diversity of cultures and backgrounds, all of you brimming with curiosity and ingenuity and united in your drive to make a difference. And maybe above all, I was drawn here because I believe that MIT is uniquely poised to harness the power of science and technology all along the continuum, from fundamental science to, science to engineering innovations for society, and deeply enriched by the wisdom and inventive power of the humanities, the arts, the social sciences, management, and design. From climate change to pandemic disease to the ethical use of AI, this is a moment when humanity faces huge global problems, problems that urgently demand the attention of the world's most skillful minds and hands. In short, I believe this is your moment, and I could not imagine a greater privilege than helping all of you seize its full potential. My mother was an opera singer, and I am definitely not an opera singer, <laughs> but back in college I did sing with an a cappella group, and it's still one of my greatest pleasures. Now, one thing that experience has taught me is it's exciting to sing solo, to take responsibility for leading the performance, but the most exhilarating feeling in the world is close harmony. Those moments when all of your voices come together to make something wonderful that none of you could have made alone. That is the spirit I want to bring to my leadership at MIT, and I can't wait to get started. So thank you so, so much. Thank you for those very inspiring, reassuring, and wonderful remarks. Um, it's my great pleasure next to have Lily Side, the chair of the faculty, come up. She was instrumental in the search, and I uh, look forward to her comments. Great. Thank you so much, Diane. This is a moment of great hope and joy for the Institute as a whole. When each of the faculty members of the search committee agreed to serve, they did so with the understanding that the charge was not to represent ourselves as individuals, nor as members of a particular department, school, or college, 
nor based on our particular areas of scholarship. Instead, our task was to represent the faculty and the MIT community as a whole, reflecting your views, concerns, and aspirations for MIT over the next decade. To do that, we needed to hear from all of you and the decisions about the decisions to be made, the actions to be taken, and the ideals that we uphold. The participation of hundreds of faculty members in our engagement sessions reinforced the committee's sense of how deeply committed the faculty are to MIT and the long-term stake that the faculty feel in the health and future of the Institute. Staff, student, and corporation members on the search committee conducted parallel processes to collect input. And as we came together to compare notes, we discovered our findings to be inspiringly similar and shared across the Institute. From all of your feedback, we formulated a rich picture of where MIT is today and where MIT could be in the future. You told us what the next MIT president must accomplish and how they could lead. This knowledge and insight drawn from every corner of the MIT community shaped the process of selecting our next president. It guided the questions we asked ourselves and of candidates. It provided the lens through which we assessed the answers. Through these comprehensive and broad-reaching efforts, we created a list of attributes for our next president to ensure that they would have a successful tenure, be widely embraced by our community, and maintain and advance MIT's excellence as the world's leading science and technology university. A list of attributes consistently emerged for the person we were seeking. A bold leader with exceptional judgment. An active listener who seeks all viewpoints with a genuinely open mind. An individual who leads from principles and integrity who is trusted by their community. A person with experience handling crises with wisdom and calm. Someone who loves MIT's uniqueness, who will maintain and advance its excellence. And someone with intellectual breadth, who is unendingly curious. I am here on behalf of all our colleagues on the search committee to say with one voice that we believe Sally Kornbluth exemplifies these attributes. Sally embodies the values that we espouse as central to the ethos at MIT. Sally brings the excellence, creativity, and spirit of lifelong learning that distinguishes great leaders. Sally felt to us like someone who was cut from our own cloth, someone who will share the love that we at MIT have for originality, quirkiness, and discovery. Over many, many hours of meetings and due diligence, the committee evaluated over 250 candidates from a diverse range of backgrounds, including every individual submitted to us by the community. But now the search is over. In the weeks ahead, we know you will quickly come to see why Sally was our choice to be the next president of MIT, our first, our only, and our unanimous choice. We wholeheartedly commend her to you with the highest of regard, and we ask you to join us in extending a warm and enthusiastic welcome to her from our institute and from our community. Now to wrap up this wonderful event, please join me in welcoming someone who has devoted his life to service at the institute, MIT's 17th president, Raphael Reif. Thank you, Lily, and uh, on behalf of the whole MIT community, I want to express our appreciation to you, Lily, to Diane Green, to John Jarvie, and to everyone who worked on the search that has brought to MIT a truly outstanding president-elect. So I hope you can feel the energy and anticipation in the room. This is truly a very special occasion for every one of us at MIT. 
And I know you need to head back to Durham shortly, so before you go, this is a moment of truth, I would like to present you with two gifts from our community. Be strong, be brave, and please join me here <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> so the first gift is in anticipation of your first day as president, when you will come face to face with one of very serious facts about your new job. We call it January. <laughs> Thank you. So, so what do you call these things? <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, we, we, hope, we hope these cozy items will help you avoid feeling immediately homesick for North Carolina. The second gift, maybe you can put this, uh, maybe I will give it to maybe Daddy. Maybe better wear them oh, Give it to Daddy. <laughs> the second gift is a little bit hard to explain or harder. It's not such a useful present. But we believe it will help you get to know certain qualities of MIT culture. You may be surprised to learn this unless Alex told you but the institute has its own glass blowing lab. In fact, the glass lab is not too far from here, it's here in the basement. And if you are particularly fortunate, you might win a spot in the annual lottery to take glass blowing lessons. I must tell you, my wife did win that lottery and I had to go with her. And we, after hours of learning, we built two wonderful, heavy, Paperweight. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. So, when you open this box, you will find something that expresses the joy this community takes in making things hands on. And that also embodies Emmett's signature spirit of playful creativity. Uh, as Chris in the audience would tell you, it could be described as a charming example of material science in action. <laughs> Over time, you will see a lot of this at MIT, but very few in a Duke shade of blue. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. But give it to me. <laughs> we have enough of those. I, uh, I'm going to have to explain this to the TSA people. <laughs> well, Sally, congratulations. You really, you are about to, to begin what, in my mind, is the best job in the world. And, and you and Danny are embarking on a truly wonderful new adventure. Chris and I uh, wish the best of success, and we truly cannot wait to see the future you help create for our really beloved MIT. So that concludes our very special event. Thank you all for joining us in person or remotely. And please join me in expressing one more time how delighted we are to meet our president-elect.